One of the common themes people have used to describe the era we live in, you know, kind of post-Christian, pluralistic, postmodern, is that we live at a time where there are no more overarching meta stories or grand narratives or worldviews. And um, what my, they mean by that is we live in a culture that doesn't all share the biblical story or the Christian story. I think, though, at heart, that's not quite accurate. It's not that we live at a time where there are no more big stories. We live at a time where there are lots of big stories that are claiming the attention, that are offering meaning to our people. And to be honest, I think most preachers, the, com the, the real competing story is not the story of Judaism or Buddhism or Islam, the way we tend to think of it, you know, the other religious stories out there, but rather stories of consumer consumptionism or what it means to be a certain vision of what it means to be American or successful, that those are the stories that I think claim our people's attention. And the only way to counter that is to offer the Christian story and the biblical story as a meaningful, seriously imaginable alternative. But to do that, we need to tell it. We need to tell it again and again and again. The Bible actually is all over the place in our worship and our preaching, but we don't always know it. And so first, how can we start by pointing out where Scripture's already at work in different passages of worship that people may know very well and yet never connected that to Scripture? So sort of highlighting the biblical character of what we do. We can also do it in by all of the meetings that we have at the church, whether it's the youth group or the church council or worship music committee or evangelist community, uh, committee, by starting, by reading just a biblical story. You, this isn't high-end Bible study. Reading a biblical story and then inviting people to talk with each other for five or six minutes about what they hear and where they might be hearing the word of the Lord for them or for this community. The other obvious place, of course, is to, is to allow the Bible to be a part of our preaching more fully by preaching the biblical story. Uh, and not only the story in front of us, but by helping people make sense of that story by locating it in a larger context. And that doesn't always, actually all take that all, that, that, doesn't all <laughs> that doesn't actually take all that long. If you're dealing with one part of the Exodus story, in 30 seconds or more, you can kind of paint the, the picture of how the people of Israel ended up in Egypt and how Pharaoh, although once uh, welcoming the people of Israel, no longer knows Joseph and who Joseph was and now is enslaving. You know, you can do 20 seconds. You can fill in the backstory to allow people to hear that more fully. Uh, and that's true of almost every place in Scripture. Uh, and we need to do that.